Hey guys, welcome to Living With A Supercar on Supercars of London. Today I'm going to be answering the question, can you use this car and drive it every day, driving from A to B and doing very normal day-to-day -day activities? Over the past five years, supercar manufacturers have been trying to create the perfect formula to create a daily supercar. However, I believe that that term is misunderstood and misused, the daily supercar. So I'm gonna be talking to you about very normal daily things that I come across in my life and that I've experienced over the past six to seven months of owning this car. And I'm going to be relaying that information back to you and trying to understand the supercar world and find out whether there is a real perfect daily supercar. In 2007, Audi created the R8 V8, which is exactly this car. Looks fantastic and had really, really strong performance to rival the Porsches and the Mercedes GTs AMGs. Their aim was to create a daily car that could be used for the track, but also be taken down to the shop. So I'm gonna be putting this to the test. Arguably, this car isn't a supercar in 2014. Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren have all stepped their game up. However, the Audi R8 V10 Plus definitely has the performance to match the fantastic looks of this car. So let's jump in and talk about the beginning of a journey in the morning. So every morning that I get in this car, I'm 23 years old and I like to think that I'm fairly flexible. So getting in this car is relatively easy. It's low to the ground, but the seats are very, very snug and very um, hugging to my body, which is fantastic and it makes the car very comfortable. However, when I get in this car compared to my Vauxhall Astra, which I had before, um, there's always worries in my head of whether the car will one, start, Number two, how the clutch will react to uh, the cold mornings as we're in middle of November and at the moment it is seven degrees outside. Not only that, do I worry about how much fuel I've got in the car. So all of these things are always playing on my mind as I get in the car on an early morning start. The three main obstacles that I face on an average day are one, the traffic. I drive to the office during the rush hour and I've sat in my fair share of traffic in this car, as have a lot of people in the UK. The second obstacle that I face is usually when I'm driving to lunch, driving to a meeting or meeting a friend. At those three, I have to worry about the journey that I'm taking, whether I'm facing any speed bumps, width restrictions, but also when I get to the end destination, what are the parking facilities like? If someone is going to open a door onto my car, are the parking spaces wide enough for my car? things that I didn't have to worry about when I owned the Vauxhall Astra. And number three is when I'm driving into central London to car spot. London is a very, very busy city with lots of pedestrians, cyclists, buses, and also cars. This car is very wide, but it's also very precious to me. So even the slightest scratch or wheel scuff is going to upset me. So throughout this video, I'm going to be talking to you about all three of those obstacles, how this car copes and what I have learned over the six months ownership of this Audi R8. I used to be able to jump in my Vauxhall Astra, not worry about the route that I was going to be taking and just drive in the most direct route to my destination. However, in this car, it's low and it's wide, but it's also very precious to me. So I have to think about the roads that I'm going to be taking. Usually I would just use my Google Maps on my phone and it would take me in the most direct route. However, in this car, you never know whether you're gonna come up with speed bumps, width restrictions, or get taken down a very, very tight country road that has blind bends with vans flying around at 30 miles an hour which is what I um, actually experienced when I was getting my wheels fitted at projects a van came steaming around a blind turn I had to slam on my brakes the van almost locked up and went straight into the front of me and it was very very nervous the roads were incredibly tight I uploaded a photo to my Instagram I think I had about this much either side of my wing mirror it's a very very nerve-wracking experience first up we have a country road and I'm just turning onto a dual carriageway now which in any car with a Soft, soft suspension would feel very, very nice to drive across. However, in this car with the suspension being so tight, you feel every single bump and you're driving along like this. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, there we go. Being 40, 50 years old, you don't particularly want to deal with that. And now we're driving down a fairly narrow country road. This is actually the road that my secondary school was on. So um, it's gonna be quite funny to drive past in this car, six years on after leaving. So we're quite close to the bushes on the left, which um, 
I don't enjoy too much because you never know when there's a, an extra grown uh, branch coming out that's um, going to scratch your car. And now we're coming up to a very, very tight bit of the road and blind corner. So I'm going to knock it down to uh, third gear, 20 miles an hour, come around this corner and we're free to go. And now we've got a big brick wall on the left and no space on the right whatsoever for a car to pass. And that's because this car is actually um, a lot wider than I was thinking when I first bought the car and saw it in London next to the likes of Mercia Largos and Aventadors. But coming around here now, this is just about wide enough for me. I mean, here is the bush, but it's also the side that people are supposed to pass me on. <laughs> and it's got a national speed limit, which means in the UK that it's 60 miles an hour on a single carriageway. I think that's right. I hope I'm up to speed with my highway code. So now the next test, there we go, oh, oh. the next test of what this car is like to drive on an everyday basis are the speed bumps. I'm driving down a road now that has fairly frequent speed bumps and normally I'll be able to breeze over them. I usually drive in the middle like most people do, I'm not calling anyone out, but in this car I'm currently doing five miles an hour and that is because this car really cannot go over speed bumps very well. We've got a zebra crossing on this one and this, I don't know whether this guy's... No, doesn't want to cross, he's just looking at the car. Come to the road to look at the car. One thing you always find when you're driving uh, the Audi R8 over a, sec a selection of speed bumps is you always have a queue behind you of people that have normal everyday cars that know that they can go over speed bumps at a certain speed um, but get held up by me because in my car, the 187 miles an hour supercar, I can only do five miles an hour. So as I pull into Tesco's now, the um, car park is actually looking ridiculously busy. It's Friday, it's lunchtime, so I'm pretty sure that people are going in getting the weekend shop and everything in between. So what I was going to be talking about is whether supercar owners are allowed to take up two spaces to ensure that no one parks very close next to them and opens their door open to you. But what I tend to do is because I know that um, some supercar owners are perceived as arrogant for not parking properly, is I tend to park away as far as possible possible. This however has its drawbacks because I have to walk about five minutes to the shop. The car park is so big that parking very very far away I may as well have just walked from work or walked from my house. Of car parking spaces is usually where I would park my car and where I did park my car where my mate actually moved it and hid my car and what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm probably about 200 yards away from the front door and there's a long stretch of parking spaces here which will um, definitely increase my chances of no one parking next to me and I will just slap it in a space like this. So I'm well between my lines, I've only taken up one space, but I've got at least seven or eight spaces next to me that side, and again, seven or eight spaces next to me that side. And this is just um, one of the more annoying factors of owning a car like this, is worrying about where you've left it. Another thing that I have to worry about is when I go to the shop for lunch and forget my wallet. As I head back to the office to pick up my wallet so that I can pay for my lunch, I'm quickly going to talk about the implications of driving this car on an everyday basis. Number one, the fuel economy isn't great. Driving around town, but also doing the long distances, you do end up in the fuel station around once or twice a week, which is a 120, 130 pound dent in your wallet every single time. But then also, because you're driving this car a lot, the mileage of this car goes up very, very quickly. And my journeys into central London, down to Project's design, down to aspect valeting, when I'm going down to Portsmouth to have my car detailed, it all racks up on the mileage. And these cars are heavily based on their value depending on how many miles this car has done. This car has actually done 50,000 miles, which isn't unheard of in the Audi R8 V8s because they were built for everyday purposes. A lot of people do use them on a day-to-day -day basis, use them to commute, but also drive them to the uh, restaurants, they drive them on a special occasions, they, so they do rack up a lot of miles. There are plenty of cars out there that have got more than 50,000 miles and plenty of cars that have got less than 50,000 miles. This car definitely sits in the middle of the uh, mileage range that most Audi R8s in the UK has covered. 
So on to the final instalment of can you drive an Audi R8? I was just about to say Lamborghini there. This is definitely not a Lamborghini, I wish it was. Can you drive an Audi R8 on a daily basis? We're stuck in traffic now, it's five o'clock, it's raining. This is a typical Friday evening in Hertfordshire. The car copes quite well with traffic, it's comfortable, it's well ventilated, as you can control the temperature of what air conditioning comes out. You can also change the um, velocity of air that comes out as well, which you can do in most cars. This car also has heated seats too, but I don't need them on at the moment. It's 7.5 degrees outside, but for some reason, it's still fairly warm in here. This car blends in quite well um, with traffic. I say that as every single car driving past is staring at me. So whilst I'm stuck in this final bit of traffic, I want to summarise... Now that car can't squeeze past. I'm going to summarise with, can you use the Audi R8 on a day-to-day -day basis? Or can you use any supercar on a daily basis? Oh, that van's close. So I'm only about five minutes away from home and uh, this video talking about, or this day filming, talking about whether you can drive this car on a day-to-day -day basis is a very difficult topic and it's also one that gets um, talked about quite a lot within the supercar world. Is there such thing as an everyday supercar? Probably not. Can you drive this car every day? You can, but you'll probably need bottomless pockets and you'll also need... Um, a very very reinforced skeleton to make sure that your um, bones and body deal with the suspension and the speed bumps and everything that you do come across on a day-to-day -day basis so by all means the Audi R8 is a fantastic car in its own right and you can use it on a daily basis but would you really really want to if you can get away with using another car and then having this as your special car then definitely definitely do that the R8 is um, a wonderful creation by Audi. It's a softened supercar, but um, I do not understand how some people can have a Lamborghini Aventador or one of the big V12 Lamborghinis and use it on a day-to-day -day basis like some of the guys in London. I um, applaud you, and if one day I can own a Lamborghini Aventador, I will make sure that I drive it every day and just avoid every single town. So there you have it, that is the um, Living With A Supercar episode of Can You Drive This Audi R8 On A Day To Day Basis. I'm definitely hoping to create a better video, a more thought through video on this topic and trying to discuss what supercars are best to drive on a day to day basis. I'm pretty sure the Audi R8 is quite a good contender. But that's it for this week, thank you for watching, make sure that you subscribe to Supercars of London, I look forward to seeing you very soon throughout the week whilst I vlog some updates on what's been happening in my life but also across the Supercars of London channel. I know you probably haven't been able to see me for the last couple of minutes of this video, I apologise but the UK is uh, now pitch black. So. I'll see you soon and maybe the next time that I video I'll be on 100,000 subscribers. So uh, cheers guys, see you soon.